Liberty Theater. How you guys doing tonight? You guys doing good, man? Right now, good mood? Good mood. Good mood. I'm in a good mood. I'm having an exciting week. I'm, uh, I'm 32 years old. I just found out I'm become a father for the very first time. Oh, thank you. Still trying to figure out how I'm going to break with my wife. Just get over it. Actually, we're, uh, we're going through a divorce, so I'm not a seller. Um, we, were, we were actually we were married for like eight years, and um, eight years is like a long time to be with one person. Um, especially when you got nothing in common. Like, we weren't compatible. We had nothing in common. Not compatible at all. Especially, uh, especially sexually. Sexually, we were not compatible at all. Like she, she's one of these people, she always wanted me to look at her during sex. She's like, why don't you ever look at me during sex? You never look at me when you're having sex. Look at me when you're having sex. And I tried, really, but it was hard, because usually she was at work. <laughs> I'm only one man. <laughs> and, uh, recent studies, recent studies actually say that uh, married people report a more satisfying sex life than single people. And I was skeptical when I was reading this. I'm like, that's bullshit. I've had both. You can't compare the two. Um, and then the more I thought about it, I was like, you know, married sex can be pretty satisfying if you set your standards low enough. <laughs> right, no, really, because that's the key to satisfying married sex, is to progressively lower your standards. Yeah, no, and I, do, I get a lot of resistance on this, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> People are like, no, Lee, you're wrong, you're wrong. The key to satisfying married sex, you got to keep it creative and exciting in the bedroom. Yeah, I don't think so. Just because I made a bad decision eight years ago, now I gotta be Chris fucking Angel in the bedroom. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Ride my motorcycle through the window, set my cock on fire, and stick it in your ear? Yeah. yeah, is that creative and exciting enough for you? Really? After being married to the same person for eight years, you know what's exciting to me? It's fucking someone I haven't seen fart. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Used to work at a prison, and uh, while I was there, they actually put a group of people together to write a policy saying that it is not okay for staff to sleep with the inmates. Right, good rule, but does that really need to be in writing? You know, what common sense, pretty much take that off the table at that point? You know, why, does, why does society always feel the need to protect stupid people from doing stupid things? You know? Yeah, stupid people are always going to do stupid things. That's why we call them stupid. Yeah. yeah, stupid people need to be allowed to make mistakes so they can learn from those mistakes. And if they don't learn, they need to be allowed to keep making mistakes until they kill themselves off one by one and eventually there's nobody left to watch NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, don't take that the wrong way. I'm not saying all rednecks are stupid. But you know, really, when was the last time you saw a Hell Camino parked in front of a library? I meet a lot of people doing comedy, especially, I meet a lot of single moms for some reason. And I'll tell you up front, I got absolutely nothing against single moms at all. I was raised by one, and my wife's about to be one. <laughs> yeah, but the ones that I do have a problem with, the ones that are always going around bitching to everybody about what a loser, their baby's daddy is always whining to anybody that'll listen, like we're supposed to feel sorry for you or care or something. Because, yeah, as far as the rest of the world is concerned, if you knew this guy well enough to let him get you pregnant, Maybe you should have known well enough to know what the kind of guy is going to stick around and take responsibility for it afterwards. So, to help you out, in case there's a man you're thinking about having a baby with someone, come up with this little test you can take. Just be ashamed to waste an associate's degree. <laughs> Question number one If your man is a fuck up as a boyfriend, he will be A, a fuck up as a father. That's it. It's a pretty easy test for this pass fail. All I'm, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying, if your dream man is the kind of guy that sits around the house all day in his underwear playing Guitar Hero, then you know, condoms should be on your grocery list. That's, that's all I'm saying. And 
Don't, oh, do not try that tired old excuse about wanting to experience a miracle of childbirth either. So I'll tell you right now, childbirth is not a miracle. Childbirth is a natural biological process that happens every day in thousands of trailer parks all over the country. <laughs> It's a miracle of me keeping your legs together after a couple of Jaeger bombs in the back of your It's a miracle. Um, you ever talk to somebody and like a few minutes later realize you just had a conversation with possibly the dumbest person on the face of the planet? It just happens to me all the time. I got this one friend that whenever he gets high, he wants to have these stupid hypothetical conversations. Like we're sitting around the other day, and I'm finally starting to get high enough to numb the pain of existence. And he comes at me with this. He's like, if you go back in time and be anybody, who would you be? Seriously, bro, I don't want to get into this. I'm not playing this out at all. He's like, no, really, man. If you go back and be anybody, who would you be? I'm like, well, if I could be anybody, I suppose I'd go back and be your grandfather. He's like, my grandfather, why? I was like, because I could go back in time to when your dad started dating your mom and talk about pulling out and I wouldn't be wasting my time with this pointless conversation right now, you jackass. <laughs> got a ticket the other day, got a speeding ticket. But, uh, I didn't get just any speeding ticket. I got one of those photo speeding tickets. Have you getting one of these pieces of shit yet? Oh my god, they're the worst. If you haven't seen them, what it is? There's a picture of your license plate, and it's got the time, the date, and how fast you're going, and they send it to you in the mail. And I'm like, what kind of crap is that? What, what kind of technocratic Orwellian society we're living in, where some fascist stormtrooper with a Polaroid and a radar gun can hide behind a bush and arbitrarily snatch pictures of ass into your car and send it to the mail? Now, at first I was mad. Pull me over, talk to me, be human. Maybe there's something going on. Then I looked again at the time and date, and remembered I was drunk. God, he didn't pull me over and talk to me. I went down to jail. I started thinking about how often I drink and drive. I started warming up this old ticket by mail idea. I think every cop should get one of these Polaroid things, you know. Imagine the new level of driving for your know, experience as you cruise down the freeway at 90 miles an hour, smoking a joint, doing tequila shots with a 19 year old prostitute. I'll pay an 8750 ticket for that. So I'm a guy, which you may have noticed. If you haven't, I'll point it out now. I'm a man, which means I'm basically retarded. Because we are guys, we're stupid. I'll be the first one to admit it. Because as a guy, really all we care about is looking cool. You know, there's, there's nothing worse than a guy trying to look cool in his car either. The, the first thing you notice is a car. He's always got like one of those lowered Hondas with a big game muffler that makes it sound like the car is farting, you know? The stereo's up real loud, all you hear is bass coming out of the trunk, just boom, 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 boom. They like get next to him a stoplight and look over, and some little white kid from the suburbs and wouldn't know how to drop it like it's hot if it was already on the ground for him, you know? And he thinks his hooded sweatshirt gives him some street credibility. You know? Here's a quick tip for you. If, you're, uh, if your parents pay your car insurance, you're not street. If you have car insurance, you're not street. Take one of these confused little crackers and drop them off on Tacoma's hilltop. <laughs> See, all I know taste for is give them blowjobs for payphone money. <laughs> Call his mom to come pick him up. <laughs> Nothing more intimidating to me than a gangster with a curfew. <laughs> Keep it real. Till 10 o'clock. That's my time. You guys have been great. Thanks for coming out and supporting my family. Enjoy the rest of the show.